All right, let's uh, go ahead and get started. I'll pray for us. Father, I pray you help us uh, today as we study for this quiz. Uh, I pray you encourage us. Uh, I pray that we'll love you more um, every single day. And we pray this in Christ's name. Amen. All right. Alleluia. What's your mnemonic device? What's your mnemonic device? Well, the first, it's not really a mnemonic device, but the first part of it is the word for other in Greek. Yeah, know. yeah, so it means one another, right? That's exactly right. Um, okay. Always. Uh, always. 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 It kind of yeah. sounds like always. Ah, it sounds like. So my mnemonic device here, and I don't know if it's where this comes from, but um, I'm reading the alpha as an alpha privative, and then the A is if. And so it means no if. So if you promise you're going to love someone always. always, you're promising that there's no ifs, ands, or buts. Um, I feel like we learned something like that before. I've, I've said it before. I, I don't know if it's the right uh, uh, etymology, but it's how I remember it. And there is something very powerful when you uh, not love someone because you're infatuated with them, but love someone because you determine that no matter what they do, that you're just going to love them. Uh, because that's what God's done to us. Uh, so no if is how uh, always. So does it mean friend or does it mean dear? Why does it mean dear versus friend? Because dear is a noun, right? And friend, I mean, dear is an adjective and friend is a noun. So technically, they give it to you with three endings. They're telling you this is an adjective. But you can translate it friend if you want, but it means dear or beloved. Uh, and your mnemonic device is like Philadelphia, the city of brotherly, brotherly love. Oh, okay. Feelings. Feel. Feelings. Oh, okay. Yeah. Brother. Just because the word for brother is, like, oh, it's very similar to that. It's like he something. And we do get in English the word like francophile or anglophile or bibliophile. File means love. Sumbino. Okay, so bino means walk. Anabino is walk up. Catabino is walk down. What would sumbino? Walk, walk with. And that's how it gets to happen, or it walk, it sumbinos. I thought of us. Would there be a difference between this verb, sumbino, and uh, like going to a location to sit down and have a meeting? I think, I think this is usually used in the figurative sense, but it's a literal word. Um, to walk with. So I will walk with, I was walked with, I have walked with. Uh, ergon ergu ta. What word in English do we get from it? Ergonomics. What? That's a great thing about mnemonic devices. They only have to work for you, right? <laughs> so if it works, uh, go, go with it. <laughs> Pleo? Sail. So I will sail. I sailed. 
I s uh, it's Acts 27. Uh, the, these are the top 500 words in classical Greek, too. So for all the Greek language, we're going through the top 500 like, words. That's right. Uh, Paul, on Paul did. It's <laughs> <laughs> where Italy is now. Oh, I'm embarrassed. But there are islands. You just said it was like where Italy is now. Yeah. <laughs> 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 it's okay. Can you even ask me? I'm all Greek, right? And Mamma Mia? Yeah. It's where it's hot. Yeah, there's an island there. That, that is <laughs> wonderful. <laughs> Most people just don't <laughs> say, well, for fear of being wrong, they don't say anything. <laughs> so. I mean, we're all wrong about uh, so tons of I stuff, know. so. Can I get a map? <laughs> uh, I, have, I, I have sailed. I have been sailed. Uh, I was sailed. I have been sailed to uh, Crete. So you were Shanghai. What's that? You were Shanghai. Shanghai. Right. Tate is then Maine. Oh, no. Is it emphasizing? Is it French? A Maine, A Maine, Lego, Human. Truly, truly, I say to you. Cray. It is necessary. It is necessary. It is faded. So. If it works, it works. So I'm going to give you a mnemonic device, and I don't even understand it, but a student came up with it several years ago, and I'll bet it'll help you. Sometimes it's necessary to be cray-cray. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know what that means. <laughs> it's like sometimes you have to be a little crazy to be a little serious. So we can thank uh, uh, Matthew Stomberg, who's practicing law. Uh, now it came up with uh, that many years ago. Wow, go me. So it was necessary. I have a question. Yeah. What's the difference between cray and day? I don't know. Th this usually is related to the word use. So uh, kraomai is like I make use of. So I guess it's necessary to use. And day is related to the word binding. So it's like it's binding. So they both mean necessary, but they're getting there from two different ways. Date uh, me. Show. I will show. I showed. I have shown. I have been shown. I have been shown. I was shown. Yes, please. Let me go. What word do we get from it? Zoos, zoe, zoology. Uh, pragma, pragmatos. What word in English do we get from it? Isn't it interesting that for every single word almost, I can say what word, and it's like um, all these. Right, and I guess it's from N plus anti is opposite. So tithe me. So it's place. And in very short order, we're going to learn the me verbs. You already know Amy. Uh, there's tithemi, histemi, um, itemi. They're called me verbs because they have kind of a strange little start off to their uh, conjugation. Typically, me verbs are reduplicating. So originally, this would have been tithemi, but that's really hard to say. So they uh, take the H out, tithe me. And so the is actually the root uh, of this word. And some people think the word God uh, comes from this word as the one who places everything. 
So I place, I will place. There's, there's an example where in the future you don't reduplicate me verbs. Uh, uh, aorist, that look with the ka ending, that looks perfect, but it's not. It's actually the aorist. Uh, uh, I placed. That's your perfect I have placed. And notice the regular reduplication with the epsilon. I have been placed. And uh, I think they're saying usually came I is used instead of that word, but and then I was placed. So uh, me verbs do a little bit strange things, but once we get into them, they'll be second nature. I saw. I saw. This is an important oh, word. It appears hundreds of times. Uh, it seems like in the New Testament. And it's the second heiress of Hara'o. So Hara'o is I see. Adon is I saw. Right? It's a go went gone verb. Right? Um, all right. So little Greek boy. In the midst of the Lafoy is the Corion. Do you see that? I thought it was the middle. In which? In which? We farm. We farm. So you can do in the middle of or in the midst of. That's all uh, translator's discretion. And not only is our Corian in Talpha. I'll make some guesses. You tell me if they're right or wrong. Not only is our Corian uh, uh, chartreuse in color. No. Not only is our uh, Corian uh, upside down. No. There. Not only is our Corian in Talpha. Is it here as well? It's here. It really comes from in plus tuto plus tha. Tha you can put on the end of any word and it's a directional. Hit arasa luma tha means to Jerusalem. So really this is in this there is what it literally means. For us, that's probably there, or if you're near it, here or here. Uh, but that's that's what it's trying to get across. Not only is our Corian there, Coria de Est and Ingus Alla. Yeah. Other Corian are near. Now, why isn't it AC there? Why is it Estin? That seems like a lack of agreement uh, to me, a plural subject with ST, a singular verb. So is it just one other Corian there? No, it's a bunch of them. Coria Allah. Mm -hmm. Maybe we should raise our hand and Say, Professor Rouse, did you make a mistake? That's probably not what we should. <laughs> Neuter plural subjects in Greek always take singular verbs. In Greek, for some reason, you, you always say the kids is all right. No idea why. That everybody follows that rule. Neuter plural subjects take a singular verb in Greek. So on the wall of my dorm last semester, there was a quote from George Bush that said, seldom is the question asked, is our children learning? That would be okay in Greek? That would be okay in Greek. <laughs> is is our children learning? I don't. Do, do you think it's they're devaluing neuter things, 
or is there something else going on? Would that inherently be devaluing them, like giving them a singular? I, I don't know. For the life of me, I can't figure out why you would do that. Yeah. Like people and persons. That's that's true. In Britain, collective nouns uh, are all plural. This government are against blah, blah, blah. The British people will say that um, because government is made up of <coughs> plural people. So even though it's a singular word, they put a plural. But I, I don't know. It's always seemed strange to me, uh, but everybody does it. Um, all right, what does that say? On the one hand, ours is from the dexia, dexterous we get, right? Ta'ala de exaristeros. On the other hand, others are on the left. That's exactly right. From the right and from the left. And they call the left hand the best hand. It could be that. It could be a euphemism, too. Um, I, I don't know. What does this say? And in the middle is a road. Hey, un hadas estin in mezzo tu hemeteru koriu kaiton. Alone. Therefore, the road is in the middle of our Corion and the others. All right. And the Coria are in the middle of the Lafoy, the mountains. Daylon de soy estin noon ta peri tu tapu hos namizo. Surely now, surely, evident surely to you is now. That's literally what it says. Surely now it is evident to you, ta peri tu tapu. So this is good Greek. You see it everywhere. Literally it says, the neuter concerning the place, but it has no neuter with it. So it's treating all of this as a noun. The things about our place. They do that all the time. Uh, in Romans 1, it talks about uh, those being in Rome, the ones twice in uh, Rome. Uh, and so they'll just put a prepositional phrase, and then you imply the noun from the gender of the uh, definite article. So the things can, now surely it is evident now the things concerning the place, hos nomizo, as spoken of? You're making a better guess than mine. Um, Mine is as I suppose, uh, and that's what nomizo means, but I've never thought about how you get from suppose to nomizo. 
I guess I've always associated that with your noose. Your noose is your mind. And you know midzo with your noose is my mnemonic device. As I suppose. I suppose now it's evident to you now the stuff about the place. All right. Pelican est in Tarkorion. What's that? How big is our Corion? How big is the Corion? Tis trafos est in tes Hellenes? Notice it's got the accent on the first syllable, so it's who? Who, who, who is the nanny of Helen? So who is the nanny of Helen? Could you say that in Greek? Lanike estin ha trophos teis Helenes. Is that right? Okay. Tis est in technon thrasalu. Oh, but read it. Read it. Read it very carefully. Who is the techna? Child. Who is the child of thrasalus? Who is the child of thrasalus? Thrasumicon. Sustaman, Mas, Tekai, Helene, Asen. Oh, he tri he tripped us up here. He's throw thrown his duels in there. We haven't learned the duels. Are the two children of? Thrasilas. Oh, and don't forget Helen. And surely even Helen is another technon. Pu oike ha thrasilas. And how would you answer that? He lives in the corner. How would you say it in Greek? Uh, thrasilas oike. Uh, in you? Is it core you? What is it? In in Korea. Uh, is Korea feminine or is it neuter? If it's neuter, how would you get to the dative singular neuter? <clears throat> Toe. Toe, I think. Uh, Hathroslas oike in to choreo is how I would do it. Let's see what he did. Oh, he in choreo oike. We were given a fuller answer. Do you think he would mark off for that? Probably not. In peliko de choreo oike hathroslas. Question mark. What size? In what size choreo, oh. Corion oh, does Thrasilos live? And what's the answer? All right, how would you say that? He lives in a small All right, how would we say that in Greek? That's exactly right. You own that. In micro, uh, in small Coria, lives the Thrasilas. The Thrasilas. Tista oke into Coria metatu Thrasilu. Who lives in the Corian with Thrasilas? 
And who does live in the courtyard with Francois? Lanake, Thrasu, Stamas, Eurydice, and Thrasos lives there too when he's not Georging, Georg, owing in the Georg, in the Tang Gang. Uh, Thras, Sumasaz, and Boldmouth, and Helen, they live with Thras Silu in the Cori. Oh, that's exactly what we got, wasn't it? So, does Ladake have the Cori on? What do you, what's the answer? Yeah, it would be no, so how would you say? Wait, the question, how, how are they asking the question? It's an assumption, so Latake has the Corion, owns the Corion? Ooh. Latake, ooh, eke ta Corion, a la, uh, thrasu, yeah, thras, thrasalas, Eke Ta Corion. Let's let's see what he got. Uh, that's it. And it's Ook here. So U is your negation. But because this has an H sound, you get that to separate from Ue. Uhe would be hard to say. So they say ook hey, not latake, but Rouse has the cord. That's exactly what we got. Rouse would be proper. And all uh, the other patrician uh, people who would go on to rule Great Britain would be proud. U oike hey trophos. Where does the trophos live? Where does she live? Uh, Ladake ha trophos hemon oike in te oikia maybe meth hey uh, with plus the genitive uh, meth hemon. Let's see what he did. Trophos lives with the other people. Does that make sense? Do you see how doing it backwards actually helps you um, kind of cross training? We could not have pulled that off at first, but now it's not overtaxing our brains. And did you notice we've gone 28 minutes and we haven't had to take a break? What does that show you about our ability to concentrate just in this class, in the 10 weeks we've been in this class together? We're improving. Yay. That's a great thing. I have a question. Yes. What is that second word? Because it literally looks like around and half were just like combined. That's exactly what it is. It's the word around and the word have combined. So what would have around? Yeah, Is what does the Corion have around it, or what, how would we say that, what surrounds? Can you hear now in the word surround, the word around? Mm -hmm. You couldn't hear that until you started thinking about it. Uh, so what uh, surrounds the Corion? Lafoy, Peri, uh, Kusi, uh, Ta Corion is what I would guess. Hey, Moan, if you wanted to say ours. Uh, that's what we got. Guys, we're getting smarter. 
we are getting smarter. I saw a t-shirt the other day, I love college, spelled with an A. <laughs> Did that in meso SD tone? What is in the middle of the, is it Corian or Coria? What is the word for road? Hados. Hados. Is it uh, masculine or feminine? It looks masculine, but it's a feminine word. They're like three, they're, they're like three words in Greek that look masculine that are actually feminine. The word road, uh, hados, the word virgin, parthenos, uh, and there's another one. And then there are three, there are a handful of words that look feminine in Greek but are masculine. Um, so I, I don't know what to make of that, but uh, the hados, estin and meso tone chorion is what I would say. Oh, so he did it, a hados. A hados is in the middle of the choreo. All right, Estin, ek aristeros. Do you see he's, this is a, an ACT prep class. Now you're reading it, now you're having to answer questions in Greek. Are Estin, ex aristeros to choreo, to throsley? I think it's saying, is the Corian of Throsselu on the left? Of the road. Ooh. Ta Corian to Throsselu est in X. It's on the right, so how do you say that in Greek? Dexios. 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 Let's see what he got. Ha 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 ha. Ukastin ta Corion to Throsalu. Ala ek Dexios. Did I tell you I had a graduate uh, student in my uh, upper level Greek classes who went to Johns Hopkins? And his geometry class <coughs> was in Greek. What? They read, they read like all those proofs, you know, about triangles and everything. Their textbook was in ancient Greek. That's a, that's a little bit over the top to me, but. Two different classes in one. That would be hard. Uh, Okay, so are we ready? Poi oi da AC Haloi foi. I thought it was going to be on me. I goofed up on this slide. I should have separated these two sentences. It's a question. The answer is the Lothoi or Hai. So what would poi oi? How big? Yeah. I think that he wants us to say what sort of things are the la foi. Oh. And the la foi are high. So what are the la foi? Um, why is that not poieto to me? It could be poieto. But the in trying to explain where you get the oi ending would be difficult. So it's from poios, the um, adjective, interrogative adjective. And Alexander cried because there were no more worlds to conquer. <laughs> <laughs>